You know, there's a lot of reasons why sustainability is so important. Let me first give a personal one. When you go to a rainforest and you sit in the middle of that jungle with billions of species around and you hear the music of the forest, you realize these trees are organic, they're life. And when they turn into an acoustic guitar, it's my music that I'm playing through that guitar that each tree is different, it's unique, it has a different neighborhood. It just adds to the whole specialness of the relationship between the musician and the instrument. I'm really proud to say that as of June of 2021, absolutely every Breedlove guitar is 100% sustainably harvested. There's no clear-cut wood that we have been to the forest where those woods come from and that the woods are exactly what we say they are. We're living up to our values across the board. I don't know about you, but there are some burst um, inspirational ideas here. From the orange to the reds, this almost looks like some of the bourbon color, you know, that orange red. Yep. That looks like that earth song color, doesn't it? It does look like our earth song <laughs> From color. From the, the little bit of green yeah. to the yellow and the red. I'll take that away. Isn't it neat how we're getting inspiration for the colors for our guitars from nature? And there's an abundance of it everywhere we look, my yeah. goodness. Our music seems like when you play an acoustic guitar that we become organic. It's all coming out of us. It's going through a guitar that came from a tree. There's nothing manufactured about it. It's just real. Look at the little highlights though, you know, in a sea of almost this, all this green and the, the earth tones, and then you get, you know, that pop of color in the rose hips, Yeah. you know? just adding just that little bit of contrast. Here we have a limb coming in, so we actually have, you know, a little bit of a radial from the the limb that's coming oh, in from here. Oh, okay. Um, that makes sense. And in looking at the growth, you know, it's fairly even. This tree was given a pretty consistent yeah. um, amount of water and light as it grew. Not all trees get it that easy. Well, we're close to the water. That makes sense. Isn't it fun that we become the interpreters of, because trees obviously can't speak English. <laughs> so, so we have to study them and become the interpreter of what their life might have been and what music might flow from them, right? You know, I, like a lot of people my age, played the guitar, had a band, and got into the guitar business back in the 60s. And then lived my career, retired, and I flunked retirement and Breedlove came up for sale, and man, what a joy. Uh, in 2010, I was able to acquire Breedlove and really do what I love, building great acoustic guitars. So I acquired Breedlove, and one of the first questions that uh, I asked our wood buyer is, how do we source our wood? And I found out that, like most companies, we would go to wood brokers, say, we need some mahogany, do you have any mahogany available? Can you send us some pictures? What's the price, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, well, do we know where the trees grew? Uh, no. And I said, do we know if we're protecting the forest or not? Well, no. Uh, do we use any clear cut wood? We don't know. And I said, okay, it's really important to me that our company stand for enhancing the world's forests, not depleting them. And that the people that live uh, in and among the forests and work in the mills were making adequate uh, incomes for their families, that they would have a stake in protecting the forests rather than depleting them, turning them into poor quality cattle ranches or, or other uses. We changed our policy. We developed the Breedlove uh, Tonewood Certification Program. And we stopped buying through brokers and um, Angela Christensen was our wood buyer at the time and either she or me or both of us visited almost every forest that we uh, sourced wood from. 
to confirm that the woods were being uh, harvested in a way that created uh, regeneration, uh, that the mills were operating in an appropriate way, that, the, that it was following our values. It took a while because we didn't know, when I bought the company, of course there was a lot of wood there, we didn't know where it came from, so we had to work through that wood and then all the wood that came in uh, behind that after I bought the company, we actually traced it. What's terrific is that we've been doing that now for, what, 12 years, and we have records of every tree or every group of wood that we buy. We can trace it, in most cases, back to the serial number of the guitar that it went into, so that we can, if you called us up and said, here's my serial number, where did the backwoods come from, and where did the top wood come from? In most cases, we can tell you. All right, welcome to the factory in Bend, Oregon. Love to share a tour with you of how we make guitars. This is where the magic starts. So this is where we receive our wood. And you can see some of our most commonly used woods are stored back here, um, easy, ready to grab and use for production. Notice the stacks of wood that have stickers in between each wood set. Um, this is to allow for airflow around the wood while it's sitting here under weight so that it can't move, but it's still able to breathe um, the environment that we're in. So the wood is well acclimated before we will ever use it to build for a guitar. It needs to be between six and eight percent moisture content. And that is the ideal moisture for the wood to be built. In this special room here, we have our Brazilian rosewood. This is the world's largest stash of Brazilian tone wood sets for building acoustic guitars. It's pretty cool. This wood has been air dried for over 30, 40 years um, in cut tone wood sets. Prior to that, it was dried in log form um, for at least 30 years before it was processed. Let's show off some wood here. I'm gonna work here. So myrtle wood. I was telling you a little bit about how myrtle wood varies so much in its look. And just to give you an idea of some of the crazy patterning that we see in myrtle, this yellow color is pretty common to find in myrtle. <clears throat> the dark brown streaks are unique. That is going to give you in it kind of a fingerprint on each set. They're all just a little different. So to show you that, we have these sets are cut out of the exact same piece of wood. They're two different book match sets and you can see how that character changes just a little bit from this set even to the next one in the book match set. This also is myrtle wood. So you can see the colors are very similar, but the patterning changes so much. This set has crazy figure. Look at this. Man, when that gets under finish, that's gonna pop. That's a sweet set of wood right there. Look at that pattern. What a book match. So that gives you an idea of just the variation in myrtle wood. You wanna see some other tone woods? Let's check it out, you guys. I'm gonna swap this. And I wanna show you some really special sets of Brazilian. These are in the rough, so it's, we haven't surfaced, resurfaced these um, since they've been stickered. But this will give you an idea of some of the really cool characteristics in this specific sort of Brazilian. This is our Puerta de Iglesia sort, and that refers to church door. Um, in Spain, they commonly used Brazilian rosewood to build um, in churches. So from the doors to the pews, Brazilian rosewood was commonly found and used. This specific look with this sapwood that's book matched up the center, contrasting the dark color of the rosewood um, 
this was used on church doors. And so that's why we call this sort our Puerta de Iglesia sort. And these are just some beautiful sets begging to become guitars. This may become the next Merzillion. Using Myrtle Wood is one of the most unique tone woods we work with. And it's all because of its character. This wood varies so much in its look. It's like a unique fingerprint for every set that we work with. It takes different colors really well, and it's become a new palette for us to be able to be expressive. Not only is it great to work with, but tonally, this wood is amazing. It's kind of a marriage between maple and rosewood. You get the beautiful crisp highs, but it has a nice balanced mid-range, and it has a great bass tone that comes in behind. So it's really well balanced across the tonal spectrum, and that's the reason why most people like to record with a Myrtle Wood guitar. The team here at Sweetwater works closely with guitar builders, and they come up with different wood combinations that become Sweetwater exclusive instruments. Now, whether it's wood combinations, finishes, or any design concepts, these are ultimately unique guitars. Breedlove is a great partner with a bunch of folks that are not afraid to color outside the lines. They've been happy to try new wood combinations and push boundaries on aesthetics in acoustic guitars where tradition can limit what's viewed as acceptable. In the case of the Merzillion, it was like a lightning bolt. I'd never seen, heard, or played a guitar quite like it. I mean, it's gorgeous to look at, sweet and balanced to listen to, and absolutely effortless to play. And this is not just a one-time thing, this is a true collaboration. Breedlove and Sweetwater continue to work on new concepts for guitars together, and I personally can't wait to see what's next. So let me go into the wood tracking. So our wood tracking system, when we purchase our, our wood sets, we've told you a little bit about how we know where all the wood comes from. We actually serialize each tone wood set as it comes in. Um, here's a barcode label to show you how we do that. So we've received this set of wood. It's gone through the check-in process. Wow, this is a beautiful set of Bear Claw Sitka Spruce, may I point out? But this label right here, this helps us track this wood back to the original purchase. So we have our part description and our internal part number, but this barcode is generated with this code based on the purchase order and the goods receipt that we received this wood. And then it's individual serial number after that goods receipt. So years down the road, somebody can call in with the serial number on their guitar and we can actually look up that guitar, go back to find this label that was from the original set of wood. And from that number, we can dive into our purchase history and be able to look at the documentation and know exactly where that wood came from. These are bear claw tops that are gonna go into a fun project Tom and I are working on. This redwood, I mean, holy cow. I don't even know if you can see the grain count on this because it's so fine. If you were to start counting the years of growth just in this one top, um, it's probably older than I'm gonna live. <laughs> so this, this was one old tree. We know that this wood actually came from a very special redwood tree. It was coined the Lucky Strike tree. This came from the Carter stash of redwood. This is some of the most pristine, beautiful straight grain redwood I've ever experienced in my years of working with wood. And then let me show you a very special tree. And it was named just that. This is the tree. This is genuine mahogany that felled in Belize. And this is one of the most prized trees used in Luthery now. It took years for them to get this beast out of the forest. This tree, it took like 15 people to hug the circumference of this tree. It was so big. And the figure, I mean, you just don't see figure like this in any wood. So this is gonna become an amazing guitar one day. And I can't wait to hear that guitar.
at this station. This is where we're gonna pull a top, a back, and a side set and get this body started. Over to the back side here, we have our CNC machines where we're gonna cut out the rosette cavity. We'll cut out the body shape itself on the CNCs. We carve our necks, fretboards, bridges, all the parts that we want to come out perfect and consistent every time, that's what we're using CNC machines for. Over here, we're gonna start using handwork to make these come to life. At this station, we install the rosettes. You can see different purflings and woods that we use in combination to make rosettes. We install those at the bench. We use the overhead sander to sand out the tops, get the top cleaned up. And then all the information we've gathered in our sound optimization process on the raw wood set itself tells us what thickness we wanna be sanding that top to for that specific guitar. And so we'll use the overhead sander to sand out the tops to that dimension. And on our backs, it's a little bit different. We take our backs to a weight. So instead of sanding to a specific thickness, we're actually sanding to weight because it's all about the density of the back to achieve the frequency that we're looking for. Over here, we have our benders. So we're gonna bend some sides and we'll use these heated elements and these forms to change the shape of a piece of wood into a shaped side. So depending on the body that we're building, we'll use a different bender for that specific body shape. And we have molds that we block that side into so that it sets and dries in its shape. We block it up with a head block and a tail block. And at that point, we now have a rim that we can take into the build process. Let me show you one over here. Oh, <laughs> that was good. Did you get the dust flying? <laughs> we have sides that have been bent. They've been blocked up and now they're holding their shape. But we need a little more surface area to glue a top and a back on. So at this station, we're gonna glue kerfing onto these sides. Once we've glued the kerfing on, it looks like this. So the kerfing is flexible. It bends to the shape that we're building. And you can see now we have more surface area to be able to glue the top and the back onto this rim. We'll do that in a few minutes. So if somebody would have asked me when I was a kid if I would be building guitars at this point in my life, I would have never guessed. I knew I, I always wanted to be involved in music. I did sing growing up, um, so I, you know, I have an experience in the music world, but a guitar was not my instrument, you know? But I always appreciated the music that was created with them. So to be part in creating a musical instrument and to do that in a way that also benefits the planet and gives something back for future generations. Um, I'm just a, a piece in this, the puzzle that makes it all work, you know? Okay, check it out. So we have our top that's received its rosette. It's been sanded out to the thickness based on the dimensions that we determined in our sound optimization reading. We have braces applied. So the braces have been glued on this top and this back. What a nice set. That's gonna make a heck of a guitar. So now we have the internal braces on. We're gonna take that into our sound optimization room where we're gonna hand tune these braces in the scalloped area of the X brace. This is where we do our fine tuning. And then if we have to come to the tone bar, we'll hit that as well. That'll voice it to the specific frequency targets that we have for each body shape. Once we have a top and a back that are braced and voiced and a side that has been curved, these parts are ready to get put together. So in the press, we're gonna clamp the top and the back to glue onto the sides. Out of the press comes a body. We have the sides with the top and the back now glued on. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the press. 
You can see that there's some wood overhanging that's gonna need to be cleaned up. And then they'll get to add binding and purfling and do a final sand on this body. This guitar is getting close to getting some details. We've cleaned up all that rough overhang on the top and the back. You can see this has received its slot for receiving a tail strip. Now we're gonna get into the bind process. And here's a really cool detail that Breedlove does that nobody else does. Come check it out. I know everybody's used to seeing the black, white, black purfling. This is one of our takes on that. We have the fine detail of maple in this purfling. And that's been surrounded by a black fiber. So this is all natural wood material instead of using plastic. We decided, you know, we use all this beautiful wood. We have these offcuts that we have no other use for. Let's try to build something with it. And we took those offcuts of maple and now we've glued them up with this black purfling and all of a sudden we have a new perf design for Breed Love. This detail can be found as a perf on a top and you can also see we use it here in the rosette. These are Breed Love distinctive elements. I love to find little bits of beauty out in the world that most people overlook. Taking the time to take a look at a little detail um, and appreciate that, that small thing. With our guitars, I try to add that extra element, that little nuance that maybe somebody else hasn't done. We are mindful about where our wood comes from and any waste that comes out of our production. We were inspired to use some of our fallout or waste wood to become another element in the design of the guitar. So for instance, the black, white, black purfling that is commonly seen on guitars, um, you know, it's traditional, but we wanted to do something different. So to add a personal touch for Breed Love, we decided to take some of our wood offcuts and turn them into a purfling to add just an extra little bit of detail that is Breed Love. From the body getting its binding and its purfling, we're gonna hop over to the neck department because the neck gets built alongside the body. We wanna make sure it's a perfect fit and a perfect setup. Over here, you can see a neck barrel being prepared to go with the body. Here we have, I bet this is gonna go on a legacy concertina. We have a slot head, um, 25-0 scale, this is our legacy inlay on the fretboard. And this is probably getting prepared to go with this body. So you can see we have the body final sanded. It's been bound. Look at this detail. We have this um, mother of pearl celluloid top perf that complements the same material found in the rosette. And you can see That's a package right there. So while the, after the guitar has been, the body has been assembled and final sanded, it comes over to the neck department where they're gonna hand shape and then hand fit that neck to the body to make sure that the angle is perfect to allow for just the right projection over the body so that we have the perfect setup on our guitar. Once we have the guitar body and the neck final sanded and fit to perfection, it's ready to get some finish. So here's our incoming rack of guitars ready to get finish put on them. You can see all these bodies and necks lined up just ready to get shiny. <laughs> they get loaded up onto our racks. So the build card always goes with the body and the neck. They're serial numbered so that we always get them paired back together. This rack is ready to go in and get its first coat of sealer and then maybe some color. Let's see, what are we building? Oh, this is the new limited run. These are gonna be embers. Let's go see what they look like over here. That's a nice end to a day. How about this? We've got a whole rack of embers sprayed up. 
with their matching necks. These guitars tomorrow morning, we'll get the first top coat put on them. We'll build a couple layers and then we'll shine those up to be high gloss. These are gonna look great when they're finished. So I was telling you a little bit about how we love to play with color, especially on Myrtle Wood. Here's a little view into some of the colors that we're just playing with right now. You can see how that Myrtle Wood takes such a great purple. Man, we've got a pretty dynamic burst going on here with some blue and some green. So we like to experiment and look at that character of the Myrtle Wood coming through. It just really adds to the dynamic of these guitars. So this is where some of the fun and inspiration comes to life. Final assembly. We have the body and the neck that have been finished. They're high gloss. The first day they come in here, we're going to glue on the neck and the bridge. And that's what we see here, our bodies with the neck and the bridge being glued on. That's day one. They'll come in the next day for day two, take off the clamps. They're gonna do a final sand out on that fretboard, make sure the projection is just right. They're gonna install frets, all the hardware, get strings on the guitar and get to hear it for the first time. Then we're gonna let it sit with tension overnight because we wanna let that guitar kinda of settle in under the tension. They'll come back on the third morning and dial in that guitar a few times over, make sure it's holding its tune look it over, shine it up, make sure that all the quality elements are hit. And then we're gonna go into our final QC sound assessment room, and we're gonna test those frequencies again and just make sure that we did it right. All right, so this is the final step in our quality control. This is where we're going to double check just the fit, the finish, the playability, everything. And then we're gonna take some more frequency readings. This is the last step in the process that we're gonna gather frequency readings and make sure that we've hit all those frequencies just where we want them and that the guitar sounds perfect. If for some reason the frequency reading is off just a little bit, we do have little finger chisels that will um, loosen the strings, get in there and actually carve on that X brace a little bit more if we have to. Um, I like to pat our luthiers on the back that they're doing an excellent job and fortunately we don't have to do that very often. <laughs> but in here we take those final readings. We also take a photo of the guitar front and back so we have documentation of how the guitar looked before it left the factory. And then um, we also include a guitar portrait card. Every guitar is going to leave our factory here in Bend with its own guitar portrait card. That's gonna give you the thickness of the top and the back it was finaled at, and each frequency reading for the top, the back, and the fundamental. It's its own little birth certificate. Sweetwater will include in their shipment to you a card, and that card will actually tell you the thickness of the top, the thickness of the back, the frequency of the top, the frequency of the back, the fundamental frequency of the guitar, and the weight of the guitar. So we actually give you that information on your individual guitar. It's totally changed the way we go about guitar building and it's why we pretty much hand build everything we do here because we can't have a machine cranking out all the same parts of the same dimensions and get to the result that we want. We're inspired by the beauty that surrounds us here in Bend, Oregon. We have the beautiful Cascade Mountains, we have the Deschutes River, we have great hikes and fishing and boating and we love to get outdoors and enjoy this beautiful area that we live in. And from those excursions, we're inspired to bring that back to the shop. From the color work that we do, to the woods that we pair, to maybe the bindings and inlay work design. We're just inspired by the beauty that surrounds us here. From the woods, to the purfling, to the rosette, to a very custom inlay that maybe is personal and adds that personal touch to a guitar. Um, that's the good stuff. Like this is what it's all about for me, is being able to bring somebody's dream to life in an instrument that will forever be part of them in creating music. I mean, that's just awesome.